If you know anything about history, then you probably know about the great battles that shaped our world forever. You most likely know about the Battle of Thermopylae in the last stand of the 300, or the Battle of Hastings in 1066 that changed England forever. You most likely know about George Washington crossing the Delaware and fighting the British to create the United States. But so often are there great battle sites that just get forgotten about or lost forever. So hey guys, Blue Earth Media here, and welcome to Fort Gaines. Most people probably could not point Mobile, Alabama out on a map, but on August 5th, 1864, a battle took place here that changed U.S. history. During the American Civil War, the Union forces blockaded all the Confederate ports and one by one took each port back. After the Union took New Orleans, Mobile became the primary port for the Confederacy. It was protected by three forts, Fort Morgan, Fort Gaines, and Fort Powell, along with the ironclad the CSS Tennessee. Rear Admiral David Farragut led the charge that would become the Battle of Mobile and take the Confederacy head on. Breaking through the lines, he took the port and dealt a massive blow to the CSA, which fell shortly after. This fort gives us a window into that time. So damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Uh, my name is Robert Bean. I'm the park ranger here at Fort Gaines. Fort Gaines is uh, one of about 40 masonry forts built from the coast of Maine down around Florida and over to Louisiana to protect major seaports in the United States. This fort protects, along with Fort Morgan on the other side of the bay, the entrance to Mobile Bay. The state of Alabama became a state in 1819, and at that point the United States realized they needed to protect this island because it, in the past it had been occupied by foreign powers. That was back before a bridge was built to the island. This was very isolated down, the, down here. And in the 1950s when the bridge was built, uh, that's when it opened up as a museum and historic site. Shortly after the fort was finished in 1861, it was taken over by Confederate forces without much conflict. Then in 1864, it saw its first major action in the Battle of Mobile Bay. Well, it was a large naval battle. Um, the Confederates had several ships uh, which met the Union fleet when they came into the bay. Of course, the Federal fleet had to pass Fort Morgan first, that's where your deep water channel is. They lost one ship, uh, the USS Tecumseh, which struck a mine. That was the worst loss for the uh, Federal fleet. Over here on this side, it was more of a land battle. Uh, Union forces brought their troops ashore to the west of us on, on the island, and they brought their artillery and mounted the, uh, the artillery on a large sand dune that's not very far from here. And they actually had the advantage of height. They could not only shoot at the fort from there, they could shoot into it. Uh, that's what really doomed this fort. Uh, took about three days of shelling, but they managed to knock down all but uh, one of the guns in this fort out of about 26, this fort had to surrender after three days. Fort Gaines is one of the last remaining Civil War forts lining the coast of the eastern United States. Here you can explore the, all the battlements, the living quarters, and even the powder batteries. They still have original period piece guns lining the walls of the fort still. And if you ask them nicely, they'll even set one off for you. Uh, the cannons that we have left, we have four originals, and they were original to the fort. And uh, they date back to 1832. They're called 32 pound smoothbores. And those old guns were designed at the time to 
uh, fire at wooden ships. And it's actually quite sad that uh, at the time of the uh, war between the states, uh, those guns were already obsolete, especially when you throw in the modern ships of the time, the ironclads, um, the 32 pounders had no effect on them. Robert was even kind enough to bring out one of the working guns they have at the fort. Even though it's on the smaller side and it shoots a blank, this is still an experience you will never forget. But then, naturally, once you're done having fun, you have to clean the cannon. Well, each uh, museum has its own individual uh, artifacts. Uh, we have a really good collection here, uh, thanks to a lot of uh, generous donations over the years. Uh, and most of the artifacts came from the site here. I like the big artillery shells. Of course, COVID has interrupted a lot of things this year. Um, we usually have a groups of volunteers who come down here to help out with the fort, whether it's doing some painting or uh, even the ones who know how to do brickwork. We've had volunteers doing brickwork over the years. So there are many ways to help us out. Hopefully when the COVID gets over with, uh, we'll get back to normal here. We do have reenactments as well, or we have in the past, and hope to get back with that as well. We get no, uh, no uh, funding whatsoever from the government. So we are, we are self-sustaining through our gift shop and the price of admission. That's it. This fort certainly is a step into the past. And if you enjoy military history, then it's definitely worth a visit. Fort Gaines may lie on an unassuming island out in the Gulf of Mexico, but it's a key part in American history that we can never forget. And who knows, there could just be something similar in your hometown. So go out and look, because there might just be a part of world history sitting in your backyard. Come down and see us. So there's two ways to get here, either by the ferry or the bridge. That's, that's really helped out the island in general, brought in a lot of people. And, but we're still, we're still a quiet spot down here, and we hope to remain that way.